Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today I want to show you how to turn a can into a takedown stove that fits into this tin. Stay tuned. So I'm a great fan of wood stoves and I've made several. As a matter of fact, I've got one that is doing very, very well and I'll put a link to it right up here. But at any rate, I collect these tins. I bought this one, if you can see, for 50 cents. And I think I got it at a yard sale or a flea market. Uh, just not a very big tin. You can see the size of it. And I'm really fond, as I said, of wood stoves, but especially ones that you can make yourself. I have several commercially made ones. But here's one that I designed that uses a tin can. And I want to show you exactly how we do it the tools that you're going to need and take you step by step through the process. So stick with me. So for this project you're going to need some simple hand tools. You're going to need a pair of uh, metal snips. You're going to need a church key which is this type of opener here on this end. This one just happens to be attached to a can opener. You're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a roll of just plain steel not galvanized. Uh, this is like a plumbing tape it's called but it's used for plumbing to used for straps and various things to hold things in place and then a large nail 16 penny nail uh, a can opener that doesn't leave any sharp edges known as a safety can opener and of course a sharpie after you've removed the label from the can the first thing that we want to do is we want to take the church key and we want to punch four holes in the bottom side now this can as many of them do has a seam and I want to make sure that I don't punch a hole or cut anything in the seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right beside it and I'm going to just simply put a hole like that. Then I go directly opposite of that, find the spot and we do it again. Then we go to the other side. So what we're doing is we're creating four holes and they're directly across from each other. So just four is what we're looking for. And so again, hole on that side, and then directly across from it, another one. Okay, it's very simple, very quick, very easy to do. That's step number one. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to punch holes in the bottom of this. This is going to become our grate for the wood to set on and also for airflow. And this is a very simple process and we're just going to use a nail and a hammer. This is very thin metal so it's very easy to puncture and all we're going to do is we're just going to go through here in a grid pattern. Now if you want you can take a sharpie and you can mark this out however you want your holes. Uh, that's that's a, a nice thing to do. It's not necessary but it can help you keep them a little more uniform and uh, so again that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and punch these holes and I'll get back with you. Alright, now that we have our holes punched and I didn't go clear to the outside for several reasons. First of all, uh, because it makes it a little hard to open and secondly because uh, I'm going to have to trim it down anyway to fit. Alright, then we take our safety can opener and we go ahead and we cut this off just as you would normally with any kind of can opener. The safety can openers work best obviously because they don't leave any sharp edges. And there we go. And we have our our lid and this is what we have left and these tabs are what's going to support this when we cut it open. Now the next step is we want to cut this into four pieces and how we're going to do that is we're just going to kind of eyeball it and again this isn't super important try to get it straight but it's not super critical we're just going to try to get it exactly in half best we can and then cut it into quarters and I find it easier to work from both ends and so you can do it however you wish, but this is just the way that I do it. And then again from the other side, and I'll finish this and get back with you. Now that we have our four pieces cut out, we have to decide which one we want for the front and which one for the back. So it's not really a big deal. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it, you can keep them all in order as you wish. And remember how you, how you cut them apart, and you can fit them that way. But again, the bottom line is once we put it this together, it's going to it's going to work quite well, regardless of how you do that. So I'm going to pick one of these for the front, and I think I'll just go with this one. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, coming down from this area here, I'm just going to draw a simple, small rectangle. And this is going to be the area from which I feed the stove. And so to get it started, again, I'm just going to use the nail and I'm going to punch all four corners. Now, even this flattens out a little bit, it's okay because you can always go back and uh, make the can a little bit round again if you wish. All right, so once we get that done, we take the tip of the snips and then we just simply cut this out. And I'll do that and get her done and show you the finished product. All right, so we got this cut out. And of course, whenever you're working with tin cans, you always have to be really careful. You could wear gloves to do this, but bottom line is just be cautious because these are sharp edges. All right, the next thing that we have to do is we have to fit them back together. And the easiest way to do that is to fit it so that they slide together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting slots halfway up on each one of these. And I, I like to come in uh, on these now you only want to come in about about that much so about an eighth of an inch maybe a quarter but we're not we don't want to decrease the diameter of the can too terribly much we're trying to keep it as large as we can all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start that and basically we want to end up with the top being able to slide in so in order to do that I'm gonna cut the top first and I'll come along this side here and I'm just going to cut a piece like that. So that's what it looks like. And then we're going to trim these edges off. But on each side of the front, I'll cut that and we'll go up halfway. All right, so something like that. And again, it doesn't have to be super precise. And then since that was cut from the bottom up, we need to cut the next one from the top down. Always making sure that these air holes are toward the bottom. Okay, now that we've got all of those cut, Here's a tip for you. On the front and the back, we only trim to the bottom, from the bottom up. On the two sides, we trim from the top down. So that's how they fit back together. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start fitting them together. And you do that by sliding. Of course, this is the top and this is the other side. Now, what's going to end up happening is you may forget which one is the back. Now, you probably won't because obviously it's cut from the bottom up just like the front. But what I do to help me remember is I take my nail and I just put a little dent, a little hole at the top. And that way I always know just by looking exactly which one is the back. Of course, the front has the big hole in it for your uh, feeding the fire. All right, so then once we get that basically put together, then we come around this way and we slide the back into place. All right, as you can see, it's a little bit sloppy and messy at this point, and it doesn't really want to stay together good. So one of the reasons is because of all these strange little curls around the side. So we're going to take our snips and pull all this apart and go ahead and trim this until it has just a little bit of a tab sticking out. So we don't need a big tab, but we just want enough to stick out that it will be able to lock into each other. The next step in the process is we've got to trim this bottom grate. And so we just use the snips and we just trim around this. And this does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly round. It just has to fit down on the bottom and not fall through. You could use like a piece of chicken wire or something of that nature for this if you wish. But I find that this works pretty good. And of course it uses the can. and. Uh, be a good way to recycle. So we end up with something look that looks just like this and then we put this down in the bottom and that sits on top of our tabs that we folded in like that and that keeps it up off the ground. It helps airflow underneath the bottom. Okay the next part of our process now is we have to form a grate on the top. Now using our strapping material just unroll it and again, this is just metal strapping. It's ungalvanized. If you do use galvanized strapping material, make sure that you burn off all the galvanization. And what we do is we find about where this will fit 
by these larger holes and so I know that that right there is about right and so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off and I do it like this so it's about in the middle of the hole and I'm gonna make two of this length okay now that we have these two made kind of play with it and straighten it out a little bit and then we want to make sure that these will fit together over top of each other so in order to do that we have to trim this and you want to make this a double cut so it could be fairly wide so we go from the bottom on one and from the top on the other and again we're cutting out a significant little section like this right in the center so that once we get everything as it should be it should slide into each other to form the X this is what goes on top alright once we get that done then we need to go ahead and cut some more slots in these large holes here so that it will fit down over the top of the can and this is what helps hold the can together because obviously we have hurt the integrity of the can by cutting it into four pieces so we have to restore that and the way you do that is by cutting large slots as I already showed you on the other side and again it's gonna look like that on the one side and then this is a little tricky if you've never done this before so just make sure that when you cut these that your strap you're gonna have one side where all three of them are gonna be facing the same direction and then you're gonna have one that you're gonna have the two on the bottom and then it's gonna be on the top so if you've done it that way you've done it correctly and then we simply put this together into the X and then we fit it over top of the can just like that so here's a tip for you as well now if you find that it has trouble drawing from these triangular holes what you can do is take your nail and just go up here a little bit above the hole I use about three to four ribs up and go ahead and put some extra air holes in these now you don't have to do it to the front because it has this large hole to draw from but this is especially important on these three sides and I just do three just like this it's very simple it's very easy to do and then of course once you're done with that you'll have to make these round again but it's very easy to do just pop that back out put a little bend back in it and uh, you're good to go and fit it back together then for your next burn but those little air holes right there can make a huge difference because what happens is all of the uh, fire and all of your uh, ashes will fall down onto this grate and it will clog up your airflow. So even though you're getting air from the bottom, it can't get up through this grate. So by putting these three holes all the way around and of course with the big hole in the front, you're going to find out that it's going to draw a lot better. So that's just a really important tip for those of you who are going to build this. All right, now we have our, our wood stove. It's put back together. And now we need to see how it works. Go ahead and light it and uh, see if we can boil some water. So, of course, it all fits in this can. And we're going to go ahead and open it up. We're going to use this. This will be our base. And what makes this nice is if you're in an area where there's a... a fire ban or something like that or you're just trying to keep the fire from spreading then this is just a great way to contain all your ashes and one of the best ways that I find to light this is I have a couple of pieces of fat wood they're already charred on the end and I stick them down inside the stove like this to prevent the wind from blowing it out and you can use a match or I'm just going to use a lighter uh, hold them together and then inside go ahead and light it up
Once I know those are burning pretty well, and of course fire likes to burn up, so holding it like this is a very effective way of making sure the fat wood is properly ignited. And so once I get that burning good, then I'm going to take a bunch of small sticks and I'm going to start laying them in here. And to get this started, it's always a good idea to put a lot of, uh, of course, your small twigs first, slightly larger ones. But I like to stack it in from the top and that gets a really good bed of coals and a good fire going right in the beginning. Now something else that I've done, once you get these twigs going and you know you've got a good hot fire, is I actually went ahead and split some hardwood. And I have it here in a little bag. And so I'm going to take some of this good hardwood and I'm going to go ahead and put it down in here as well. And you want to make sure that these hardwood pieces are shorter than your stove. But go ahead and just start packing them down in there before the flames get too high. Just like so. So that works really well, getting those in there like that. And that will give me a really nice burn and a really good amount of hardwood to boil my fire. And you can use just little twigs, but one thing you'll find out with twigs is you have to feed it a lot. And so you got to feed it somewhat consistently with this as well. But if you're just trying to start a fire, trying to boil some water, uh, then this is just a great way to get it started. So now that our fire is burning really well, We'll go ahead and set our pot of water on there. And we've already got some bubbles starting to form on the bottom. It's only been a couple of minutes, but the fire is burning hotly. All right, and there you can see we have a good boil going on. And uh, it's been doing that for a short while here. But uh, we could keep feeding twigs in if we wish, but it's doing a real good job just like it is. All right, let's, uh, let's pack this away. How does it look packed up? Well, we take our, our tin and then we stack these. And these little triangular sections here, they fit inside each other. So uh, you may have to take some pliers or your fingers if you're real careful and bend those out a little bit. But they should go inside of each other and stack pretty well. Just like that. So these, these four pieces here should stack together. And then they'll lay down inside. And you'll take the grate and put it up under the front here. Because the triangles will hold it up in the back. Go ahead and push it down and make sure that it fits in good. And then we take our two cross pieces, which we've disassembled. And they go into the side, just like this. And close it down. And there you go. Now you have your cooking box <laughs> with your little stove inside of it. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.